Ryan had a, a couple of things on the third quarterback and running back. Uh, with running back, are you going to basically look at Laird, Duke Johnson, uh, Dokes this week, and then make a decision on who to replace Malcolm Brown's body, active list Sunday, and also with losing Reed Senate, are you guys looking young developmental quarterback with practice squad or maybe someone with experience who could step in if two or Jacoby is injured? It's good to have you back, Barry. Thank you. <laughs> I was... Uh, no, no, no. How was how was your? Uh, I heard you got to look at some foliage. You're away, checking out some foliage. Foliage, yes. exactly. Uh, so we signed Jake uh, Dolagala. He's a quarterback with the Central Connecticut. Uh, we signed him this morning to the practice squad. Uh, as far as the running backs, uh, you mentioned Laird. You mentioned Dokes. Uh, Duke Johnson. We just signed to the practice squad also. So we'll take a look at all those guys this week. Um, Obviously, more familiarity with uh, with Patrick and uh, and Dokes, uh, so we'll get to know uh, Duke Duke this week and see what that looks like. Um, is that it? I mean, what else? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Looking up the central Connecticut for you. Spelling as we speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you guys? What do you guys like about Duke Johnson? Obviously, you know, experienced player, um, you know, good runner, good in the pass game, um, has been a productive player in the league. Uh, so, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of film, a lot of uh, good amount of production over the course of his career, um, and just kind of looking at the running back situation, what was what was available, felt like that was, uh, you know, the best that was available. He was facing the same team he was uh, injured against. No, um, after asking, will there be some mental hurdle involved in that? I don't think so. I think you know he's he's uh, he's excited to you know get out to, to practice today, um, to play with his teammates and to compete on Sunday. Where is he in relation to the flag jacket? I, I didn't notice. Was he wearing it this past Sunday? Will he continue to wear it if he was? Yeah, he's been wearing some protection. Um, I can't, I can't, you know, I'm no, uh, I don't know the ins and outs of the flap, the flap jackets, but I know, I know I've, I've had, you know, some conversations with uh, Joe Chimino about it. Um, but, you know, he's, he would definitely wear, you know, protection around the ribs. Hello, during the start of the season, is there something that you might have learned about yourself or your coaching staff that you did number four that this lesson, has Tip taught you a lesson about how to be a better coach? I mean, I mean, I think you learn stuff every day in this league, um, and I think we're all, you know, we're all learning. We're all trying to get better on a daily basis. I mean, I ask that of the players, and I certainly ask that of myself. So, um, I think every time, you know, we, I go out there and coach, uh, offense, defense, special team, situation, uh, game practice, walkthrough. Um, you know, I'm always looking for a way to uh, get a point across, uh, you know, coach something a little bit better, teach something a little bit better, teach a situation a little bit better, um, motivate a little bit more. Uh, th I think those that's kind of an ongoing, you know, daily process for me, uh, not just football wise, but really across the board. Um, you know, I just try to get better in every area of my area, every area of my life. And uh, you know, I try to um, talk to our players about doing that. Um, obviously, from a football standpoint, uh, but also in other areas. Ryan, what's your confidence level that Devontae will be able to play Sunday? Uh, you know, today we'll walk through, um, but um, hopeful that he can. Well, he'll be uh, available for the walkthrough for sure. Uh, hopeful that he can, you know, string a couple of day, good days of practice. Uh, Thursday and Friday, and um, you know we'll see if he's available for the game. So the second week in a row that you're facing a team coming off of my week, what are kind of the talking points that you emphasize to your players about facing a well-rested, you know, team that's eager to go? You know, I think every week um, there's different challenges. Uh, you know, a team coming off the bye, obviously they've 
um, had some rest, they'll have energy. I mean, I think, you know, just being on the road and being in, in that environment, there's going to be energy in the stadium regardless. Um, but well rested, like you mentioned, you know, should be full of juice, full of energy. Uh, but I would expect that from this team, whether it was or really any team, whether they're you know, coming off a bye or not. Uh, you know, both still getting treatment, you know, against the walkthrough today. So expect them to both be, um, uh, or they'll both be at the walkthrough. Um, but, you know, getting better, moving in the right direction. Going back to the issue of uh, being well rested, I think there probably was an assumption on, on my part anyway last week that the walkthrough was because of the London trip. But now we're still on Wednesday walkthrough. Is that something that you foresee keeping? throughout the rest of the season? And if so, what's the thinking on that? Uh, I think, you know, it's week to week. So uh, there were some some bumps, bruises coming out of the game. Um, and just felt like, you know, it's in the best interest to get good, two good days, Thursday and Friday, to, you know, take a little bit off from um, today. There's been a lot of talk about one player relative to a trade, but just in general, have you made it a point to address sort of the whole group about the looming trading deadline? Not about one player generally, about the trade deadline coming. Nah, we don't really talk about, you know, we talk, we're, we're talking about the Bills. Uh, we're talking about the Bills. We're talking about, you know, individually trying to improve and get better in practice. Here are the things we need to do this week against this team for, you know, for Joe, for Hal, for, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of the conversation. You know, there's no – conversations about you know trade deadlines is uh, Jerome feeling better if you talked to him today obviously he's a big part of your defense yeah he'll be out there today um, you know he'll be you know listed limited uh, kind of working through uh, the issue with the um, the injury or the yeah let's call it you know the injury and uh, it's calm day today and you know, hopefully he, he'll be out there uh, you know for practice um, you know a true practice on Thursday. Sorry, Brian. Um, do you think that the offense is lacking in chunk or explosive plays? And if so, um, you know, what is the key to hitting on those, especially in the second and third quarters where you guys you know, started strong but kind of fizzled out in the middle of the middle of games? Yeah, I mean, I think there's – I think in, it, it, we, we've moved the ball, you know, better the last couple of weeks. Um, I think we had, you know, a few probably a few more, you know, chunk plays the week before than last week, uh, but I thought we moved it, you know, you know, pretty efficiently. Um, obviously, not not well enough. Um, and then, you know, we just, we, you know, we just got to be more consistent in those in the middle part of the game. Um, but you know, I think overall, um, I think, uh, I think we're moving it fairly efficiently, you know, and. You know, taking what the defense gives us, um, but you know we got to do more. Brian, what did the film tell you about Austin Ryder's performance at center? And is he a guy you might consider keeping him in the starting lineup, regardless? Of I thought he did some good things. You know, it's when you step in and uh, you haven't played, and then you know you go in there and um, you know playing a, playing an NFL game. It's it's. I thought he did. I thought he did well. Um, I thought his communication was good. I thought. Um, his overall um, understanding of where he needed to be was good. Um, you know, I'm sure there's, well, I know there's some plays that, you know, he wishes he would have uh, blocked a little bit better or protected a little bit better. Uh, but overall, I thought, um, you know, we were able to, uh, uh, you know, run the offense from an O-line standpoint, you know, without a, you know, a, a huge drop off. I thought he did a nice job. Well, knowing you have your focus on the game and, and not get into the details which y'all talk about, can you take me through maybe what the process is in season when you and Chris talk about transactions or different things involving the 53-man roster? I mean, we talk every, you know, pretty much every day about, um, you know, the roster, uh, inactives, who's playing, who's not playing, practice. So um, it's really a, more of a daily conversation. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm answering that your question. It's, but as far as the process, I mean, it's really a daily 
process uh, where we're, um, you know, something pops on the waiver wire. You know, we may, I may pop in his office. He, he comes into mine. Um, practice squad, um, practice squad protection. I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's not like a once a week thing. It's really every day. Um, and, you know, we're constantly, you know, you know, evaluating, you know, our team and seeing what else is out there. And, you know, those are kind of daily conversations. Brian, I asked um, Josh you know, a couple days ago about just overall defensive philosophy and playing more zone or as opposed to blitzing less. Um, I want to ask you, how how much is playing young safeties like Javon and Brandon Jones kind of played a role in maybe not blitzing as much? And kind of big picture, have you seen defenses tend to kind of favor coverage as opposed to um, – Sacrificing that with you know the rule changes kind of favoring. Um, I didn't get the last part of the. Just big picture, have you kind of seen defenses tend to pri prioritize coverage more as opposed to blitzing and, and sacrificing that in coverage? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's really game plan specific. I think it's, uh, situation uh, uh, specific to the situation. Um, Uh, you know, it's it's a kind of a you know kind of a tough question, uh, because you know when to cover, when to blitz. You know, it's you know there's a there's a there's a feel involved there. Um, so, I mean, it's it's you know obviously part of every game plan. Hey, we're going to cover them here. We're going to blitz them here. We're going to try to pressure them in this situation. Uh, you know, score may play a role in that. Uh, there's I mean there's a, there's so many kind of factors. Um, so I think it's, it's, and obviously the players involved, you know, a part of it as well, you know, do we think we can get there with a four man rush, five man rush? Do we feel like we need to blitz them? You know, there's, there's so many kind of layers to them. Um, you know, you may want to, you know, have a plan to blitz and then you get there on a three man rush and you say, why would I, why would I blitz them? You know what I mean? That every, and every game is a little bit different. So, uh, it's a tough question. Uh, I think, you know, we'd have to look at a specific game and say, hey, you know, what happened, you know, what happened on the last series? They made you, you know what I mean? I mean, there's there's a lot that goes into that. What about the zone man uh, choice? What are some factors that maybe go beyond the obvious when choosing which path to go? Um, you know, situation. You know, if you want to get on them on first down, you want to get them on them on, you know, second and whatever, third down. Um, you know, what did you do the last time? I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of factors. It's it's kind of the same as far as calling a game. Well, I asked two of this after the game, and I'm curious in your thoughts. Like, how do you or do you balance kind of the mentality of letting the guys know, like, hey, keep your chin up, but also saying I'm upset and I'm frustrated too? you're going through, you know, a losing streak like this. Is there a balance between kind of like making sure you're on the same page with the players there? Uh, I mean, I like to think that I'm very honest with the guys. I think, you know, that's kind of been my philosophy and, you know, how I'll just continue to to uh, interact with the players. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think these guys work hard. They're resilient. Um, they give great effort, you know, they should keep their heads up. At the same time, we've got to do better. And that's really, you know, it's as direct and honest as I can be. And, you know, that's that's been the message to them. And, um, but I, I also tell them that I'll be better, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not one to, you know, point fingers and, uh, you know, try to divide a group. I mean, we're all in this together. So uh, that's kind of the message. And I think, you know, honesty is always the best way to go. Uh, that's been my kind of overall philosophy, and I'll continue to do that. Flo, you talked about you know being honest with your players. Tua spoke about after the game you being transparent with him with regards to the trade reports. Um, you know, how do you guys kind of just navigate this the final days up until the trade deadline with you know reports kind of coming out as often as they happen? Well, I mean, I don't really get into rumors. I don't really pay attention to rumors and hypotheticals and this and that. Um, 
Tua is our quarterback. I've said that, you know, multiple times. And I've said that to him. And it's about as, you know, I try to be, you know, honest and transparent with our players. And, you know, that's what I've been. Thank you, guys. Thank you.